take on the Seminoles in the Sweet 16. Let's send you out there now to Sean McDonough along with Derek Dickey. Thanks, Jim. Welcome back, everybody. Seton Hall, the hottest team in the country at the moment, ready to do battle with the seventh seed in the southeast, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. And as Jim just mentioned, the winner of this game advances to the Sweet 16 in Charlotte on Thursday night to take on Florida State, an easy winner over Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. Sean McDonough along with Derek Dickey. It's nice to have you with us. The Pirates are indeed the hottest team in the country. They have won 12 in a row. But Coach P.J. Carlissimo is concerned about Western Kentucky as the Hilltoppers employ a style his team hasn't seen this year. Well, they really do. They play an up-tempo style, a lot of presses, a lot of traps, wants to run the ball up the court 94 feet. P.J. wants to play half-court game. He wants to slow the tempo down and really get control of this game early. Another concern for Coach Carlissimo is Mark Bell, the five foot eight guard who paced the Hilltoppers to their opening round win over Memphis State. He had nine rebounds at five foot eight. Mark Bell is the leader, senior leader on this basketball team, second leading scorer, leader in assists, but he's a very strong presence when it comes to driving inside, trying to score those hoops. One of the calling cards of Seton Hall under Coach Carlissimo has been their ability to play well when it matters most, and that's at the end of the season. Certainly this year is no exception. It's just the latest strong run to the finish for Coach Carlissimo. They have won 12 in a row, which is now the longest streak in the country as a couple of teams had streaks snapped last night in first-round NCAA action. Terry DeHair is the man who ignites the offense. Terry gets so much credit for his offensive skills, but defensively, he plays the passing lanes exceptionally well and also runs the floor really well. But what he's added to his repertoire this year, the pip dribble penetration, able to get inside and score as well as look for the dish. Starting lineups for Western Kentucky, Brian Brown and Darnell Mee, the forwards, Darius Hall, the center, Darren Horn, and Mark Bell in the backcourt. For Seton Hall, Jerry Walker and Arthuris Karnishevis, the forwards. Luther Wright at 7-2 is in the middle. Brian Caver, the point guard. Terry DeHair, the two guard. And the officials, Ed Hightower, Duke Edsel, and Lynn Short Nancy. Ralph Willard in his third year as head coach at Western Kentucky and a friend of P.J. Carlissimo. Ralph, formerly an assistant in the Big East at Syracuse. 25 and 5, the record for the Hilltoppers. They enter this one having won seven in a row. While Seton Hall has won 12 in a row to up its record to 28 and 6. That's the second highest win total in a single season in Seton Hall history, surpassed only by the 31 victories in 1988 89, where they went to the national championship and lost to Michigan. Been a while since these two teams met, but not since December 10th, 1959. Seton Hall leads the all-time series six wins to two. The Hall in white, the toppers in red, and we're underway in Orlando. The last of six games here over three days in Orlando. I'm talking with assistant coach Mike Brown of Seton Hall. He mentioned that there is one area where this team needs to concentrate focus and put the ingredients all together in order to have that complete package and make a run to the final four. And that's with Luther Wright. Get consistent play from him on both ends of the floor. 16 seconds into the game, Darnell Mee picked up a foul. He's the best defender on the Western Kentucky team. Jerry Walker had trouble finding a handle and lost it out of bounds. Bell brings the Hilltoppers into the forecourt. This is Darius Hall, number 32. Not much of an offensive threat. Guarded tightly by Jerry Walker, who was the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Western Kentucky wants to get into their offense. They run a lot of screens. Ralph Willard's team is very similar to that of Kentucky in terms of looking for the outside shot. They average over 18 three-point shots per game. Aaron Horn missed their first shot attempt of this game. Western Kentucky shot the ball very poorly in the win over Memphis State. That was a combination of rush. They hadn't played in about 10 days and also nervousness. Things will be better. Both of those factors eliminated this afternoon. And there's a shot going in from the top of the key from Ryan Brown, the senior from Atlanta. Good penetration once again. Every time you look up, Mark Bell is going to try to do something to draw the defense. When he does, he's always looking to pitch the ball back out of the ground. Already you see Western Kentucky trying to trap when they have the chance out near midcourt. Bell nearly had the steal from DeHare. DeHare 
might have been bumped down. He got up looking for a foul call, and there was none forthcoming. On the run, Brown blocked by Luther Wright. Brown again off the rim. Horn scores. Western Kentucky is not a big team, but they are very athletic when it comes to jumping, moving their feet, quick hands, going after that basketball. Right, missed the jam as Caver sent him it along. Walker, it rolls out. Nothing going right for Seton Hall at the moment. Aaron Horn kicked it out. Arnell Mee was eyeing the three, but couldn't catch the pass. Western Kentucky is a team that's seems to be very very young and they believe in themselves they believe that any game they start they have a chance to win you talked about it at the outset bell's ability to penetrate with his strength at 5 8 and he's not afraid to take shots even though he's looking up at the trees six nothing western again they try to trap and the hair broken nice look right foul this time by darren horn his first. Mark Bell, a man we featured in the opening of this show, is going to penetrate with style, also with a lot of force. He's five foot eight. They list him at 160 pounds, but a very, very strong player when it comes to driving to the basket. Darren Horn picked up his first foul. The second against Western Kentucky. And it sends Luther right to the free throw line at 7 2. He's the tallest player in Seton Hall history. He's a 68% free throw shooter. Two minutes and 45 seconds into the game, Coach Carlissimo's charge is still scoreless. Luther Wright has to play with confidence. Make, missing that first dunk shot might have disrupted his concentration just a little bit. He's done some very unfortunate bounces around the rim. It's out of bounds off Darius Hall. Seton Hall will keep it. Adrian Griffin quickly in for Luther Wright. The Hall 0 for 3. Western Kentucky hitting at 50% from the floor. Karnishevis, the junior, lays it in. Arteris Karnishevis, a very underrated player. People in the Big East certainly know what he's capable of doing, but I think the rest of the country is going to get a chance to see in this NCAA tournament exactly how gifted an athlete that he is. The hair, the steal, and demonstrating some of his gifts. 6-4, Western Kentucky. Well, great pass. Horn might have been deflected by DeHair. It wound up in his hand. Very bit too much dribbling. Lost it to Horn. This is Bell pushing. Bell driving. And a held ball. The Hilltoppers get it out of bounds. Western Kentucky. We talked about how Terry DeHair is capable of scoring points, but look at the hustle on defense. Always playing the passing lane very well, but after he gets the ball, he knows how to take it down and finish the play off. But just an excellent job of concentration and maintaining his dribble. Mark Bell, senior from Louisville, Kentucky. And now Horn off to me. He had a tough offensive day against Memphis State. Coach Willard called it his worst offensive game of the year. He had 10 points on two of 13 shooting, including just one of seven from behind the three-point line. Darnell Mee had his hands filled with Anthony Hardaway from Memphis State. Playing such hard defense took away from his offense. Aaron Horn drives in a three. He has five, and that's the margin for the toppers. Hilltoppers applying a little bit of pressure, just token pressure, trying to get Seton Hall to pick up that dribble. Gary Walker was hacked hard by Darius Hall. First foul on Hall and the third on the Hilltoppers. One of the game plans that Ralph Willard wanted coming in was to, knowing Terry DeHair's a score, he's going to get his points, but make him work for his 20 to 25 points. Don't let the other players on the Seton Hall basketball team have career nights. Jerry Walker makes the first. He's a 74% free throw shooter. A senior from Jersey City, New Jersey. 
a pair. And at our first time out, the Pirates are down by three. Life. Around every corner, financial questions. Choices. Surprises. When you need direction, the Principal Financial Group can guide you toward your goals. With flexible insurance, solid investment strategies, stability you can count on. No wonder people have been coming to the Principal for over a century. To secure your future, to get an advantage, get the Principal Edge, the Principal Financial Group. It all started 35 years ago. I'll never forget that day. David. David. Gotta go. It's funny though. You grow up, raise a family, your priorities change. to find a company that works as hard as hurts to make you happy. Because from start to finish, we're behind you all the way. With freedom rates that are really low and free unlimited mileage wherever you go. Hertz makes renting so easy and trouble-free, you may not even think about the company behind the car, but the company is always thinking about you. Hertz, we're America's wheels. Is it really a story for 60 minutes that three Roman Catholic women were sexually harassed? It is when the man who did it is their archbishop. 60 Minutes, Sunday. Welcome back to a sold-out Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. Second round action in the southeast region with 15-42 left in the first half. Western Kentucky leads Seton Hall 9-6. This is Cephas Bunton, number 34, who has checked into the game for the Hilltop. P.J. Carlesimo has come out with full court pressure. And of course, Western Kentucky now to get some people unfamiliar with handling the basketball to now handle it. Karnishevis a bit too frisky as he tried to deny the pass into Bunton. Sebas Bunton, a player who was recruited by Seton Hall. The foul on Karnishevis was first. Karnishevis of the Pirates, his first team first. And that's the first foul against Seton Hall. Four and a half minutes to pick one up. Bell for three. <laughs> Largest lead for Western Kentucky, 12-6. Five points for Bell. The hair way off. Griffin. Bunton got a hand on the ball. Horn pushes. as a junior from Louisville. 25 on the shot clock. Karnishevis saw that pass coming. Another example of Seton Hall playing the passing lane. Western Kentucky's going to have to use a few more ball fakes, head fakes. 12-8 Western Kentucky. Horn is guarded by De Hare and the Seton Hall man-to-man. -man. It's Griffin checking me. Horn was stripped by Griffin. Griffin had the best night of his college career in the opening round win over Tennessee State. He's off to a solid start in his first minutes of this one. Bell took it back. Three turnovers by Seton Hall. Me for three. His first points, and perhaps he's breaking out of the cold shooting 
that plagued him in the first round game against Memphis State. Western Kentucky in this game is three for three from beyond the three-point line. They average 18 shots per game from the three-point arc, and any time they make penetration, they're always looking for that pass out beyond that stripe. The hair, the Big East Player of the Year, gave it to Walker. He shuffled his feet. Couple of substitutions for Western Kentucky. Brian Brown comes back in, and Chris Robinson, number 33, checks in for the first time. He's a freshman from Macon, Georgia. John Leahy in for the first time for Seton Hall for Jerry Walker. Ralph Willard wants these Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky to play good, quick defense. Get to the ball quickly, either on the offensive boards or loose balls, and also move your feet quickly. You will be able to force turnovers if you continue to work hard. Bell, guarded by Caver. Serious size advantage for Caver, who's nearly 6'5". Robinson shot short. And out of the pile comes Horn with the ball and a whistle against Seton Hall. It's on Karnishevis, his second. Just what we talked about, getting the loose balls quickly. Looks like the Hilltoppers are going a little more aggressively than Seton Hall's for balls that are down below your waist. You have to work at that. You have to actually get down and dirty. Both are right back in as Karnishevis took a seat with his two fouls. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Western Kentucky, the number seven seed in the Southeast. Tournament champions in the Sun Belt Conference. Showing a seven-point lead. Horn's pass deflected by DeHare. Horn tried to make up for the turnover with a steal. Instead, he compounded the error by picking up a foul. Foul is on number 33. Chris Actually, Robinson. they charge it to Robinson. Is Both Horn and Robinson grab the hold of DeHare. The foul on Robinson, his first. Griffin, a freshman from Wichita, Kansas. DeHare, a long three. Griffin, the rebound. Seton Hall has to make those outside shots so they can continue to look down low. Luther Wright went out of the game for a couple minutes, coming back with a fresh attitude. See if he can help rebound the basketball and also get some scores down on the block. The hair. The part of his game that's improved this year is ability to penetrate off the dribble, create his own shots or shots for others. His shot was off the mark, but it'll go out to Seton Hall as Horn couldn't save it. Darren Horn did a great job of going after that basketball, but threw it off of his own teammate. Western Kentucky off to a much better shooting start than in game one Thursday night against Memphis State. The Pirates are cold. Here's Michael Fralix, a freshman from Fredonia, Kentucky. It must be a tradition, the very affectionate hug for Bell when he replaced him because we saw that Thursday night as well. I think it might be something that uh, a lot of players use as, as good luck or as a confidence builder. It's just a freshman coming in the game. Mark Bellis Sr. Trouble getting it in. And finally, Caver did inbound to Adrian Griffin. Brian Caver played only 13 minutes against Tennessee State in the first game due to foul trouble. Leahy off the money. It's ripped down by Brian Brown. Then he rips it away from Terry DeHare. DeHare wanted a jump ball. Horn pulls up. Softly off the glass for two more. He has seven. He only averages nine a game. Darren Horn's from a basketball mecca. Takes Creek High School down in Lexington, Kentucky. Knows how to score. DeHare. Lock the call. As... Brian Brown stepped in trying to take the charge. First foul on Brown. You always cringe and hold your breath when you see a player going into the middle and losing their balance. Terry DeHare doing a nice job with his penetration, but he does come, come down unscathed. But you have to like the fact that Seton Hall's not shooting the ball well from the outside. DeHare's going to try to get some higher percentage shots for his team. Danny Hurley replaces Brian Caver at the point for Seton Hall. Hair makes the first. 
is the leading scorer for Coach Carlesimo at just under 23 points per game. And tough to find a weakness. Certainly free throw shooting is not a weakness. He's at 82% for the year. Terry DeHair has an excellent opportunity to go on to the next level. DJ thinks he could be a lottery pick. Western Kentucky by seven. Take a look at Western Kentucky. We didn't see the beginning of that play, but they open the floor to where they give themselves enough angles to be able to make a pass to get the ball inbounds. Once they get it inbounds, they're looking to attack. They want to try to get the ball to the basket, come up the middle, look to your wings, and try to get a layup if you can. Our initiative is back in with two fouls for the Hall. 16 fouls already against Western Kentucky, so it'll be bonus for Seton Hall on the next Western Kentucky foul. The Pirates have only been called for two fouls more than nine minutes into the game. The nine-point lead for Western. Ralph Willard said he's going to mix his defenses just a little bit. The hair off from three-point range. Brown saved it, but then it went off the hands of Cephas Bunton. Cephas Bunton, along with Chris, Bra Chris Robinson from Western Kentucky, were actually recruited by P.J. Carlissimo's staff at Seton Hall. Hall has hit just one of its last seven shots from the floor. Danny Hurley was stripped in the crowd. And Brown kept it alive. This is Fralix bringing it into the forecourt as Mark Bell is on the bench getting a breather. Another display of good quick hands, quick feet by Western Kentucky. Raylix bounced it through the legs of Robinson. Dribbled dangerously close to midcourt. Also dribbled in front of Terry DeHare. Raylix with a turnover waiting to happen. Hurley missed the layup. Numbers for Western Kentucky. Hurley tried to sneak up behind Raylix alone for three. Robinson the miss. Right the rebound. Hall only has three field goals in the game. You can make it four now as DeHair knocks one in. They've turned it over five times. Terry DeHair is so smart when it comes to getting the best shot, a high percentage shot. Coming from the right side, he gets right into the middle. Me into traffic, threw it away. Into the arms of DeHair. Once again, Terry DeHair playing the passing lanes. Good quick hands, tips the ball out to himself for the layup. Four straight points for Seton Hall. Catch the Western lead to five as we approach nine minutes remaining in the first half. The Hilltoppers from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Fralix, strong drive. Beautiful layup. Very nice shot by Michael Fralix over the top of Luther Wright. Whenever you have a shot blocker seven-footer in there, you have to put the ball up high on the glass. Karnishevis spots up for three. Well short. Early the rebound. Early at a strong game in the first round Thursday night against Tennessee State. He had nine points and five rebounds in 22 minutes against the Tigers. The hair was fouled as he pulled up in traffic. Going to take a look at Terry DeHair. Going to make this deal. He's going to be coming in the left part of your screen over here. 
good quick hands by DeHair to make that tip away, but Seton Hall has increased their defense. They've actually come out a little bit further. Now they're playing the passing lanes a little bit better. See if his Bunton was just called for his first foul. And that creates the bonus situation. The seventh team foul. Darius Hall comes back in for Bunton. Darius Hall. goes back to the Seton Hall bench. the first. He has nine of the 15 Seton Hall points. Terry to here on his release. We're going to watch his foot feet footwork just a little bit. On his release, he actually leans into the shot, but there's nothing wrong with that. Brian Caber gives the hair a rest. Ten points for the hair in less than 12 minutes. Terry has three steals as well. Western Kentucky by five. We approach eight minutes remaining in the first half here in Orlando. The winner meets Florida State in the Southeast Region Sweet 16 Thursday night in Charlotte. Me, the Bell is back in. Brian Brown wide open and threw up an air ball from 12 feet. Give credit to Seton Hall's defense for not allowing Western Kentucky to get their hands on the on the ball in a good shooting position. Luther Wright was right in the hand, in the face. Adrian Griffin with Jerry Walker all for a travel. 7.39 left in the first half. It's Western Kentucky by five. The NCAA Women's Final Four, April 3rd on CBS. The Grand Am's great. Well, what happened to the, uh... The Accord? Yeah. I found out what the Accord really cost. With air, automatic, anti-lock brakes, 19500 Whoa. Huh? They weren't talking to me. Really? Wow. The Grand Am, they don't give that away. And... Air, automatic, standard anti-lock brakes, yeah. 5000 less than the Accord. It's five less? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you know what that means a month? Got me into a new car. What are you gonna do with the money? Eat. Money, yeah. absolutely no way that it's possible that this little guy wearing cut-off pants with a belt and Washington Redskin tube socks up to his knees ever made it to be the number one tennis player in the world. It's just not possible. Not, not possible. It's possible. solid granite gray of Wall Street. The boundless blue of a Paris morning. The radiant reds of an Australian sunrise. In celebration of a new style of service at home and abroad, we now embrace the colors of the world as the new colors of United Airlines. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. All right, the team's back on the floor at Orlando. Let's squeeze in a look at the other two sites. First in Salt Lake City, uh, Vanderbilt has a 12-point lead over Illinois. Illinois with the basketball inside four minutes to go in the first half, Mike. And really, it's been Vandy start to finish, Jimmy. They've shot the ball very well. McCaffrey has 12 points. They're four or six from three. And Vandy is a very tough team when they have the lead because they can pass it and shoot it so well. All right, BYU in Kansas, in Chicago. This is a two-seed in the Midwest, Kansas. And Kansas in this game now leading by three with that hoop. Raph? Uh, BYU, big team in blue here. Has played a lot of zone, but all of a sudden Kansas able to make some threes from outside. Jordan with two. Walters starting to penetrate a little bit. So the lead down to one. We hope to get you a closer look at the two games at halftime. Right now, let's send you back to Sean McDonough with Derek Dickey. 
Thank you, gentlemen. While you were away, Western Kentucky had a three-point shot from Mark Bell. And Brian Caber threw it away at the other end. This is Adrian Griffin with a steal and a slam. Just when Western Kentucky starts to make a very positive run, they make a mistake. They make a turnover, give Seton Hall a chance to get back into the basketball game. Almost able to break it open are the Hilltoppers. They have never trailed. They've led by as many as nine. They're up six at the moment with six and a half minutes left in the first half. Brian Brown has had uh, Luca Wright guarding him a couple of times at the free throw line. Don't be surprised if he tries to take him one on one. Great hustle by both Bell and Horn, but Horn touched the ball on the sideline. Another opportunity to take a look at some great defense by Seton Hall. Adrian Griffith going to come down with the slam after a very good steal. Most of the fans in attendance here are Florida State fans, and they're cheering for the underdog Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, and that's why you heard a lot of groaning. They're also groaning because if they look up at the scoreboard, eight fouls have been called against Western Kentucky and only two against Seton Hall. And that's the second personal on Darnell Mee, the leading scorer for Western Kentucky. And according to Ralph Willard, one of the best defenders in the country, he did a great job holding Anthony Hardaway of Memphis State to 8 of 21 from the floor the other night. The here, 5 for 5 from the line. Player of the year in the Big East Conference. And a second team All-American by both AP and UPI this year. First Seton Hall All-American in 40 years back to Walter Dukes in 1953 who led the Pirates to the NIT championship. The lead is narrowed to four as we approach six minutes remaining. Me, the MVP of the Sun Belt Tournament. Western Kentucky beat New Orleans to win the automatic bid out of that conference. Darren Horn, the baseline shot. He has nine. He's already matched his season average. Darren Horn's known for his outside shot, also his leadership for the just being a sophomore. Me. for Darnell Me, and they push the lead back up to eight. This is what P.J. Carlissimo wanted to avoid, a run and gun up and down game. Western Kentucky plays the passing lanes very well, always looking to tip the ball away if they can. Luther Wright has gone to the bench. John Leahy is back on the floor for Seton Hall. He's a good outside shooter. Walker, nice feed from DeHair. That's a chance for a three-point play. And a big problem now for the Hilltoppers as Darnell Mee has just picked up his third foul. Seton Hall wants to get the ball inside the painted area, inside the free throw line. Try to get as many high percentage shots as they can. You see Darnell Mee going to the bench, but look at Terry DeHair taking the defense with him, looking for the dish down low, but that's nice concentration by Walker to be able to muscle the ball up inside the basket. Terry Walker at the line, a 74% free throw shooter. Finishes the three-point play. With 5.19 left in the first half, Western Kentucky leads by five. The Hilltoppers in red have led the throughout. Lead has been as much as nine. And a mock cheer from the crowd as a foul called against Seton Hall in the third against the Pirates in the half. The first on Caver. Western Kentucky has been called for nine fouls. The Hilltoppers will inbound it from the sideline. The Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky have done a great job at defense, playing the passing lanes, playing the pressing, up-tempo style that they like to play, getting loose balls, also hitting three-point shots. And a foul called on the floor. John Leahy called for a hold, and that could have gone either way as Paul extended the arm, it appeared, to shove Leahy away. Florida State already a winner. They routed Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. 94-63 was the final in that one. The Seminoles await the winner of this one in the Southeast region. Sweet 16. 
Five minutes left in the first half. Mark Bell, senior leader out of Louisville, Kentucky, is doing an outstanding job getting the ball in his hands, looking for his teammates on the break as well as half court, able to hit that outside long-range three-point shot. Bell is skipping through the traffic, lines up in three-point land and missed a shot. Bunt in the offensive rebound and score. First points for Cephas Bunton. Western Kentucky does a great job with their very strong athletic ability in terms of rebounding on both ends of the court, especially the offensive end. We talk about strength, and Hall won the strength battle from Caver, ripped the ball out of the Seton Hall point guard's hands. Bunton. Walker appeared to get a piece of it. Seton Hall needs to tighten up their defense just a little more. They've gotten some gambles, made some steals, gone down for some shots, but they want to play half court. They want to try to slow the game down a little bit on Western Kentucky. The hair brought it into a crowd and was fouled by Darius Hall. His second, and that is the tenth team foul against the Hilltoppers, so Seton Hall will be shooting two the rest of the way. That's the tenth team. Ralph Willard, a graduate of Holy Cross, a native of Brooklyn, New York. His accent is sometimes not easily understood by the folks in Bowling Green, Kentucky. As a matter of fact, when he took the job at his opening press conference, he talked about one of his goals being to fill the arena. And those in Bowling Green had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Ralph Willard has done a tremendous job with recruiting for his Hilltopper basketball team. Looks like we have a blood situation on the Western Kentucky side. Mark Bell. Number 14, I mentioned earlier when there's blood, the player has to go out of the game and be tended to, have it bandaged and covered up before he can return. And Jerry DeHare is the line. 9 of 11 are the Pirates, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Seventh coming into this game in the nation at 75 and a half percent as a team. And 10 of 12 today as DeHair made the first. This is a time of the year when a team needs to make their free throws. Team that shoots the best from the field and the free throw line is going to continue to advance. DeHair a miss, and it wound up in the hands of Fralix with 345 left in the half. Fralix had Bunton open. The pass was off his fingertips. We'll return to Orlando after this on CBS. This is a Goodyear Aquatread, and this is a gallon of water. At highway speeds in a rainstorm, Goodyear Aquatread pumps a gallon of water every second, thanks to its computer-designed deep groove aqua channel. It channels water away as you drive to keep more of the tire in contact with the road for outstanding wet weather traction. It's only from Goodyear. And it comes with a 60,000-mile tread life warranty. The all-season aqua tread. Try a set. We like to say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. If this is how you think of Volvos, we may have the car to change your thinking. The Volvo 850 GLT. May I help you? Well, I got right through. Yeah, here's what I need. Four tickets. I need two tickets. How many tickets? Two tickets, seven, eight o'clock, five. Central Rock. Yeah. That will be fine. Thank you. Right. When tickets for the largest concert tour ever held in North America went on sale, Ticketmaster relied on Sprint's 800 service to do the job. Hey, if Sprint can handle all this, it can certainly work for you, too. It's tough to keep ahead of the competition. You gotta move fast to stay on top. You need two-day two priority mail. In two. two days, we deliver two, two pounds for only two. two ninety. If the competition's new rates are just two. too much, visit your post office to send two-day priority mail, or call one eight hundred the USPS for your free starter kit. We deliver for you. Thursday night against Memphis State, Western Kentucky shot only 
for the game, and they were 3 of 17 from three-point land. Big improvement in both of those numbers this afternoon against Seton Hall, and as a result, the Hilltoppers lead by six with 342 left in the first half. The Hilltoppers are actually controlling this basketball game by playing exceptional defense, getting to the boards, getting to loose balls quicker than Seton Hall. Seton Hall still has more turnovers than field goals, make it 10 turnovers now and only seven field goals. The quickness displayed by these Hilltoppers from West Virginia, Kentucky is very impressive. Bunton, there was Bell up in the offensive glass at 5'8", but it wouldn't go in for him. Leahy, sophomore, in the walker. He fouled by Brown, a chance for a three-point play for Jerry Walker. And that's the second foul on Brian Brown. That's strong, very, very strong for Jerry Walker. Six foot seven inches, 245 pounds out of St. Anthony's High School. Very, very strong move, but Seton Hall has to continue to look inside to get that high percentage shot. Chris Robinson back in. Replacing Greg Glass, who was in very briefly. Glass didn't play at all Thursday night against Memphis State. Walker finishes the three-point play, cutting the lead to three. Seton Hall shooting free throws very well. Had they not been, they might not be in, in this basketball game right now. Kentucky hasn't shot any. Bell misses a three. The hair hit the deck on the rebound action. And it's going against Western Kentucky's Chris Robinson. And that's three fouls on the freshman from Macon, Georgia, selected by USA Today as one of the top 50 freshmen in the country this year. Foul trouble is actually hurting Western Kentucky at this stage in the game. They have two players. Darnell Mees on the bench also with three fouls in this first half. The glass comes back in. And the hair toes the strike. Perry's now seven of nine from the line. And Western Kentucky's lead is three points with 3.04 left in the first half here in Orlando. The air cuts it to two. He has 14 points. Western since me went out of the game, Derek, with the three fouls, you can sense momentum shifting to Seton Hall. Absolutely, because Seton Hall is getting to the foul line. Western Kentucky played well early, made some great steals, actually took control of this basketball game. A few turnovers, costly turnovers, just like this one, and made three free throws by the Hall, enabled them to get back in this game. It was Bell who turned it over, DeHair who converted it, and Seton Hall, which has failed by as much as nine in the first half, has battled back to not to score at 30. They're on a 6-0 run. The Hilltoppers need to get a good shot this time. Showing a little bit more patience, running a Kentucky style, if you will, offense at the top of the key, trying to get someone free, spreading the floor a little bit. 12 on the shot clock. Bell. Kicked it out. Glass for three. three. Glass, who did not play at all Thursday night against Memphis State, knocks in his first shot attempt of at the tournament. He's a sophomore from Elton, Kentucky. Actually transferred from Alabama. Very good basketball player. Good quickness. DeHair on fire in the first half. He has 18 points. Talk about good quickness. That's a quick release. Terry DeHair has not worked quite as hard as Ralph Willard would have wanted him to get these 18 points the first half. Well, Coach Willard said, you know he's going to get his 20. You just have to make sure he doesn't get 30. He's on his way toward 30. Plus. 25 on the shot clock. Western Kentucky with a one-point lead over the number two seed in the southeast, Seton Hall. Bell shot off the mark. Brown kept it alive, but the Hilltoppers couldn't track it down to the corner. Seton Hall will inbound with a chance to take the lead for the first time today. 
Western Kentucky has now gotten into a pattern where they're taking quick shots. Not only are the shots quick, but they don't have proper rebounding position on the weak side. The hair for three in the lead. Race for it. Hurley got a hand on it. That should be Western Kentucky ball, and it is. Coming up, Prudential Securities at the half with Jim, Bill, and Mike. That is 58 seconds away. Seton Hall now 0 for 5 from three-point land. And the rookie Gabriel, the gentleman, on the progress of these games. They reach halftime. That's only the fifth foul of the half against Seton Hall. It's on Danny Hurley, his first. As his brother is in action today in Chicago against California. Bobby Hurley and Duke taking on Cal. Our colleague Leslie Visser told us yesterday that Bobby Hurley on Thursday, prior to Seton Hall's first game, called to wish Danny well, and they shared their hopes that they would meet in the championship game in New Orleans. That's the only way the brothers Hurley could meet again. They played in the tournament last year when Duke eliminated Seton Hall from the NCAA, and Danny Hurley did not score a point. He'd like to have a chance to erase that memory. I understand that their father and coach Hurley is still with St. Anthony's uh, up in New Jersey. They're still in the high school basketball playoffs. This has been delayed a few times by the snow that hit the Northeast. That's the game clock, and the shot clock is just about one second behind it. Essentially, they can take the last shot of the half. This has to be a confidence builder for Ralph Wheeler's basketball team going into the half, either with the lead or the last shot at the half. Bell down the lane. Lays it in. Seton Hall with time. Three seconds. The hair was well defended. That won't count. So after losing the momentum, Coach Willard's charges might have gotten it back with the lay-in by Bell just prior to halftime. At the end of the first half, the score, Western Kentucky 35 and Seton Hall 32. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA Championships. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a bud. Last year, the Oldsmobile Achieva went up against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. In an independent 100,000-mile test, the Achieva won. Today they're matched up again. But even with air, anti-lock brakes, automatic, cruise, tilt, and more, the Achieva won. Didn't I just say that? It's your money. We thought we'd been everywhere. Seeing everything. We were wrong. We're back to the bone. We're back to the bone. These guys were weird. And we liked it. Later, they took us to the Tower of Buzz. Brother, tomorrow we ride again. You have to be quick. You have to be smart. You need a clear head. You think I can do this on drugs? No way. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. This is CBS. How is it to drive? It's like a spaceship, like a jet. You just like, take off. It's kind of like the Batmobile. Definitely like to take it for a drive. Check. Uh, it handles really well. The storm's really fun to drive. A lot of control. It's got to be a relationship with a car, I guess. Check. You have to get something that you can afford. Woo! 
Ooh. So that's reasonable. You get $400 off this car if I'm a first-time buyer or a college graduate. Check, one, two. Storm. From your... Northeast Indiana. Chevy Geo dealer. <laughs> Day 12, India. Hustling tennis shoes around the world was getting old, so I sat in with a group of wandering Hindu minstrels. Of course, I told them about Spies' Nikes for $39.98, but then we got down to something more serious. Suddenly, the keyboard player yelled Purdue. He was a Purdue fan, and pretty serious about it, too. It takes all kinds to make a world. CBS Sports presents Prudential Securities at the Hat. Sponsored by Prudential Securities. The most important thing we earn is your trust. This is Prudential Securities at the Hat. The Hilltoppers over the hall by three. I notice a, just a little bit of perspiration on Mike Francesa. Love that. No, no, no. I, I think Seton Hall will come back to win this game. What about you? Well, I thought they played a, a terrible first half for the Hall. Uh, Western Kentucky made some threes, hurt them with their quickness, and actually was able to control the tempo and make some steals and really put the Hall in trouble in the first half. The Hall bounced back. The hair at 18, get the ball inside early second half. Is that what you would do? Uh, well, uh, don't ask me. <laughs> He's done a great job without me, but they've never lost to a lower-seeded team, Seton Hall. Mm, mm. Good note. I rib uh, Mike, of course, because he picked Seton Hall to win the whole thing. Seton Hall, the only uh, Big East team still alive in the tournament, as St. John's was defeated earlier today in the East Region second round matchup. Arkansas took them 80 to 74, and uh, in this game, uh, David Kane gave him a nine-point lead. In fact, it was a ten-point lead, Mike, with about nine minutes to go. And Arkansas, you're worried about them making that run, and they made it late, 24 to 8 to close out the game. You see the big bucket there, really the pressure, and you'll see the dunk that really iced it. That put them ahead for good. That's Daryl Hawkins, minutes. and uh, you saw a look there at Brian Mahoney. And uh, the St. John's coach, in the last 30 seconds, Raph, down by four, mm -hmm. his team did not foul Arkansas. What was the strategy well, there? Arkansas, relentless and exhausting. They like to spread the floor. But this is a situation, I think, when Brian looks at it, that giving the foul would have been important. There was a chance to get back in this game. So a little bit upsetting for him and his club. But when you think of it, this is not a get-after-you type of team. It's something that maybe in the offseason they'll start thinking, well, end of games, we've got to give one up. You could, the Jim Valvano theory, it's never over, right? Brian Mahoney was, in fact, yeah. asked about that situation after the game. He got a little bit testy. Take a look at what he said in the press conference about the last 30 seconds or so. I think it was about the last 20 seconds when you all cut it to six. And then you didn't foul. You were down, what, six points? You got yeah. a six-point play? <laughs> well, I, I, I guess you could have two three-pointers. You know, well, I mean, did y'all look? The game was over at that point. How did you see that, Mike? Brian had a great season. He had a bad last minute. I think he should have fouled. All right. Elsewhere today, North Carolina and Rhode Island. This was uh, quite a blowout, a 45-point win for the Tar Heels. Phelps with 15, Montrose with 15. Carolina has won 30 on the season now for the first time since 1987. Here's a look at the East bracket, Carolina and Arkansas. Set now for Friday at the Meadowlands, wrapped in the East Regional. Uh, Caroline, everybody feels they're playing great basketball, maybe the best performance today. This is a game where the big people inside, they're good perimeter passing to control the offensive end of the floor. All right, we're going to come back with a live look at Illinois Vanderbilt, BYU in Kansas. They're about to begin the second half at both sites, and we'll continue on the road to the Final Four in just a moment. every corner financial questions choices surprises when you need direction the principal financial group can guide you toward your goals with flexible insurance solid investment strategies stability you can count on no wonder people have been coming to the principal for over a century to secure your future to get an advantage get the principal edge the principal financial group Lately, another 800 service has been promising to save you a few drops in the bucket over AT&T. What they're not telling you is that they lose 50% more 800 calls, calls take longer to get through, and the other company is twice as likely to have a network outage. Now, when you think of all the sales you could lose if you don't have AT&T, their promise doesn't hold much water. One of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. 
There's a luxury car so exclusive, many people don't even know about it. Only a certain number are produced each year. Their owners enjoy an incredible level of quiet and impeccable road manners. But despite all efforts, word is getting out. Which means now, probably everybody's gonna want one. It's your money. It's all here. The teams, the coaches, the history. The excitement of the 1993 NCAA Final Four. To receive your copy of the official souvenir program, send $9 to NCAA Programs. 904 North Broadway, Lexington, Kentucky, 40505. Please allow 46 weeks for delivery. As a college sports fan, you read and hear about the NCAA every day. The NCAA is college presidents, faculty representatives, athletic directors, and coaches at hundreds of campuses across the country. They work together to protect the interests of student athletes and the integrity of competition. They set standards for academic and athletic excellence. We are the NCAA. If you're spouse for NU. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the second round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. The people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet. It's the right beer now. There's one guy who did not want the rock. Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. Half time of the sixth and final game played here this week. And the number two seed, Seton Hall, is on the short end of a 35-32 score. Western Kentucky did its damage from the three-point line. They were five of nine in the first half from beyond the arc while Seton Hall did not connect from three-point country. And Western Kentucky did not get to the free throw line and the Pirates stayed in the first half by going 12 of 16. Western Kentucky has a chance to really do well in this basketball game if they can keep Darnell Mee in the game and out of foul trouble. He's got three fouls in the first half. His third foul came with 523 remaining in the half. Western Kentucky led by five then. Walker pushes it in. He has 10. He and De Hare have combined for 28 of the 34 Seton Hall points. They got two points off the bench in the first half, and that was it. One point lead for Western Kentucky. Aaron Horn gave it to Darnell Mews back in with three fouls. Horn, a bit too anxious and traveled. Seton Hall beginning the second half with big Luther Wright, seven foot two inch, 270 pound center on the bench. And the reason for that, he's not able to keep up with the pace of this game. The hair off to Karnishevis. And now Griffin starting the half instead of Wright. The hair pulls up for three. Loose ball rebound, tracked down by Darren Horn, the sophomore from Lexington, Kentucky. Out of Tate's Creek High School, his backcourt mate in high school was Coach Ralph Willard's son, Keith, who's now at Wagner. Coach Willard has another son who's in high school right now and a top prospect, Kevin Willard. Kevin wants to play for his dad. His dad isn't sure that that's such a good idea, although he's certainly capable of playing at that level. Well, that's a tough decision whenever you have one of your children playing for you. Bell. Oh, did everything but score. And a foul on the follow-up action against Brian Brown. And that's his third. So Robinson, Brown, and me all have three. Mark Bell has been very entertaining throughout the entire weekend here in Orlando and does a great job at entertaining the fans with that move, trying to get that shot to go in. Unable to get it, but you have to like the way he takes his body inside at only five foot eight inches. Seton Hall has never led in the game until now. Arteris Karnishevis with the baseline jumper. He has six. The Pirates have the lead for the first time this afternoon. Mm -hmm. 
Me. Fouled. And he'll go to the line for the first free throw attempt of the game for Western Kentucky. That's the reason why Ralph Willard wants to keep Darnell Me in the game. He's their leading scorer, also their leader in rebounds. Get him in the game, get the ball in his hands, let him become a little more active, and also get to the free throw line. Foul was on Adrian Griffin, his first. Number three, Darnell Me. Me misses the first. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Three fouls on me, Robinson, and Brown. Seton Hall doesn't have anybody in foul trouble at the moment. Me rattled the second one in. Six points for Darnell. Me were tied at 36, two minutes into the second half. He's still going into their press, trying to trap the ball if it gets to one of the corners. The hair guarded by me. Walker has bunted on him and has trapped the hair. It spins off. Caver got a hand on it above the rim, but couldn't knock it in. Me. Stolen by Griffin. Karnishevis alone for three. That bounces in and out. Walker fouled on the floor by Darren Horn. That's his second. You hate to see fouls committed, but that might not be a bad foul by Darren Horn because there's no question that Jerry Walker had the inside position and probably would have gotten the ball back up to the, to the glass. De Hare at 18 in the first half. Turned it over. It was intercepted by Darius Hall. 11 turnovers by the Pirates. Horn off a screen. Knocks it in. 11 for Horn. That's better than his season average of nine a game. And the Hilltoppers lead again. Looks like Ralph Willard's game plan is starting to work a little bit better for him right now. Boy, Me has to be careful. He was reaching in on Walker and could have picked up his four. He backed off as Walker laid it in. 12 points for Jerry Walker. That's his average. Very easily could have been called for that foul, Sean. 38 all. Bell blocked by Caver. Western will inbound it under the bucket. Western Kentucky on their defensive end is also now making Terry DeHair work a lot harder to try to get open for a shot and either get the ball out of his hands or make him just look away from going to the hoop. Horn had it rattle out. We've noticed in the six games here in Orlando, the rims aren't very forgiving. No, they're not. They're very, very tight. Usually in an NBA arena is where you'll find that. Walker missed a short one. Me. Dumps it off to Bunton, 4-2. Bunton got off to a slow start this year because of an injury. He suffered a broken wrist in the preseason. Didn't play until January. You can see him getting better and better at the end of the year. A lot more confidence he's playing with right now. De Hare leaned in to score. His first point to the half. He has 20. Me lost the grip. 15-53 remaining in Orlando. We're tied at 40. The higher you go, the more power you need. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. Nothing ever got to me. That's why up here, they depend on the most horsepower ever in a turbo diesel pickup. I go around. Chevrolet. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Like Finding work. It's the ultimate test students face. At ITT, we had a vision. Better teaching and facilities would lead to better students, which would lead to better jobs. And that's what led us to invest over $35 million in ITT technical institutes. It's nice to know our investment is working. ITT, we're adding more than just our name. Here on the set, when the lights come up and the camera starts to roll, 
there's no place to hide. And even one flake of dandruff, even one, can ruin it all. That's why I use Head & Shoulders. You know, it's even better than it was just a couple of years ago. Today's Head & Shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts. Put it to the test. Prove it to yourself. Head & Shoulders and Head & Shoulders 2-in-1. Because great hair can't have flakes. These days, people who want to save money on lunch are brown bagging it. Because McDonald's original hamburger is still... Lawson. Karnishevist. Lays it in. Nearly coast to coast for Karnishevist, the junior from Lithuania. He has eight points, and Seton Hall leads again by two. It's a very good display of how quick Arturis Karnishevist is. Once he got the ball out in front of himself, was able to go all the way down and finish that play off. Florida State awaits the winner of this one. They blew out Tulane earlier today here in Orlando. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Griffin stole it. Bell had it back momentarily. Leahy looked like a travel. No call. Griffin rolls over. And the Western Kentucky fans are really in an uproar. Teams are doing a great job at hustling after loose balls. Western Kentucky got a lot of those balls early in the first half, which enabled them to get this lead. Now, Seton Hall is going after the ball. Bell called for the foul as he collided with Walker in that mismatch in the low post. Take a look at both these teams trying to find a handle on the basketball. Nobody's there. Leahy actually comes up with the ball. No foul was called, but the fans are still going after it. And usually when you try to get up, the referees call travel. No call was made. On either occasion, and Karnishevis is called for a charge. Will they count the bucket? No, sir. No, they will not. Lynn Short Nancy waved it off. And three fouls now on Karnishevis. The first to reach three fouls for P.J. Carlissimo. Take a look at Mark Bell, 5'8", 160 pounds, sacrificing his body for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers to absorb that charge. Seton Hall by two. Horn trying to shed Leahy. Leans in. No basket. Waved off by the outside official, Duke Edsel. As John Leahy is called for the foul. His second. The Western Kentucky fans were not very pleased with that call. They felt like it should have been a basket, but in this league, you do not get continuation. Only in the NBA. The man speaks from experience, having played for the Golden State Warriors championship team in 75. Bunton missed the short one, but was fouled. By the way, Derek Dickey, happy birthday. Thank you very much. And also to Mike Francesa back in the studio. It's his birthday today also. Wow. He's a lot older than you. <laughs> I don't think the folks who've watched this this week would believe that you are 42 years old today. With a grandchild. Mm. Bunton. His uncle, Granville, one of Western's all-time leading rebounds. As a matter of fact, Granville Bunton had 27 rebounds in a game in 1972. Two other uncles, Bill and Stanley Bunton, played for Louisville in the early 70s. I played against Bill Bunton at the University of Louisville when I was at the University of Cincinnati. Very good basketball tradition in that family. And Cephas off the mark with the second one. A one-point lead for the Hall with 14-22 remaining here in Orlando. Walker powers in, charge, no basket. First foul on Jerry Walker, it was Bunton who took the charge. The quickness of Western Kentucky Hilltoppers once again is going to pay off for them. Take a look at the footwork. Get down inside. Cephas Bunton got the position, able to establish it, drawing that charge once again for the Hilltoppers. DJ didn't like the call. It did look like Walker lowered the shoulder. Right into Bunton, who had the position. Western Kentucky with the ball down by one. Bunton, too strong as he tried to score over Karnishevis. Foul on the floor, it's on Adrian Griffin. That's his third. So after only being whistled for five fouls as a team in the first half, the Pirates are starting to pile them up here in the second half. That's team foul number six. 
It'll be one and one on the next foul against Seton Hall. And still 14 minutes remain. Hilltoppers are being a lot more aggressive attacking the basket now in the second half. And I'm sure Ralph Willard looked at the same stat sheet we did and saw that his team did not get to the free throw line. Bell, the youngest of 18 children. He'll be the first to earn a college degree. Coach Willardson, when he went to Mark's house to recruit him, he had to get up every 20 seconds and be introduced to another member of the Bell family. Caver found a seam and missed the layup. Chris Robinson cleared the miss. Bell to the cutting horn. One-hander wouldn't go. He was bumped by Terry DeHair. And that's the bonus. It's the first foul on DeHair. We're at Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida. This is the first time ever that the city of Orlando has hosted the NCAA tournament. They've done a terrific job in Southeast region action. Second round, Western Kentucky hanging with Seton Hall. The Pirates looking for their 13th consecutive win. They're the number two seed in the Southeast region. And the winner of this one will advance to the Sweet 16 and meet Florida State on Thursday night in Charlotte, the Seminoles, an easy winner earlier this afternoon here over Tulane. Western Kentucky Hilltoppers have done a great job the first half with defense, playing the passing lane, getting to the basketball quickly, not only on the floor, but on the boards as well. And they've gone down and executed on their offensive end, hit some threes, and now they're getting back to the free throw line where they didn't go the first half. Florida State has advanced with the win over Tulane. Horn made the first to tie it. He's a 75% free throw shooter. He has 12 points and now 13. And it's the Hilltoppers by one. Approaching 13 minutes remaining. Early foul in the backcourt by Chris Robinson. That's his four. Ralph Willard cannot afford to have foul trouble for his team. Even though Seton Hall is not going to the foul line on this trip, Robinson's going to have to come out of the game with those four fouls. Number three. It's really the first game here in Orlando of the six in which the fouls have been a part of the story. Darnell Mee back in. He's been playing with three since the start of this half. That was the fourth team foul on Western Kentucky, so they're still a ways from the bonus. Early, here to carry it, the crowd grown. Walker scores. 14 for Jerry Walker. Good experience by Jerry Walker using his body. You notice Terry DeHair has not touched the ball the last couple of times down the floor for Seton Hall. Me, great pass, slam dunk, Darius Hall. His first bucket of the ball game. It's a one-point lead for WKU. Hurley tripped by me. That's number four. Hurley's still on the floor. And Coach Willard is pondering what he is going to do with Darnell Mee, who has picked up his fourth foul with 12.38 remaining. Danny Hurley, after being inserted in the game, has become very assertive especially when it comes to distributing the basketball and this particular play comes up with a little bit of a turn of the ankle but I thought he did a great job in being the leader out there someone PJ Carlissimo has to have bring the basketball at the court and also distribute it get it into the hands of Terry DeHair also get it down on the blocks to Jerry Walker really a poor decision by me with the three fouls to run that close to Hurley step for step Rushing in one thing, but he was, as you saw, close enough to triple. I agree with that. We got a little over 12 minutes to go. Let's find out if that is going to be a factor in this game. It was in the first half when me went out. Karnishevis called for a charge. And he's the first Pirate to pick up his fourth foul. That's a big call. Arteris Karnishevis is going to attack the basket. He's doing a great job because Seton Hall needs to get higher percentage shots. The second half, they struggle because Western Kentucky has tightened up their defense, but in going to the basket strong, Arturis did pick up his fourth foul and has to leave the game. Trelix is in for me. Leahy back in for the Hall. Fralix misses a three-pointer. DeHair with the rebound. Terry DeHair at 18 points in the first half. He has only two here in the second. 
We've played eight minutes in the second half. Twelve minutes remaining. DeHair has two more with a chance for three. Showing why he's the Big East Player of the Year. Terry DeHair's using his experience. Catches the ball on the wing. It's going to put his head down and drive straight to the basket. Knowing Western Kentucky is very close to being in foul trouble. Continue to attack. The foul was on Brian Brown, his fourth. And then he goes to the bench with the four fouls. Chris Robinson is playing with four for Western Kentucky. And Brown and me, a couple of starters on the bench with four fouls. Arnishevis on the Seton Hall bench with his four. The hair now 9 of 11 from the line. He has 23 points. Seton Hall leads by two. It's back in New York. Seton Hall is not the only two seed in trouble at the moment because in Chicago, in the Midwest, the two seed Kansas up only a point on BYU with 6.30 remaining in the game, Bill Raftery. Pretty good hands when you've got guards like Adonis Shirt and Rex Wolf and Rex with 21 points, making threes, penetrating, being creative. They've got to get it into the open floor. BYU with the zone has prevented the quick releases and the open floor opportunities. Size, get it inside BYU philosophy. And that's been their strategy so far. All right, Mike, let's take it to Salt Lake City, Illinois, and Vanderbilt. Looks like Van in this one inside four minutes to play leading by 13. Vandy with the ball in the white as you said Jimmy up 13. They led by 17 in the game. McCa Billy McCaffrey 25 points. Vandy a tough team to chase in this spot. They'll spread you. They pass the ball very well and they make their free throws. Very tough team when they're in front. All right folks we'll keep you posted especially on that BYU Kansas story that's brewing. Now back to Orlando with Sean and Barry. against North Carolina. Seton Hall leads by two. The foul of the Pirates, Jerry Walker, his second, sends Cephas Bunton to the line for Western Kentucky. The one and one opportunity. That was the ninth foul against the Pirates. So there'll be two shots hereafter for Western Kentucky. Bunton's only a 60% three for He's two of three from the line today. Button is six points. High ball game, 47 apiece, with 11-18 remaining. Western Kentucky did not shoot free throws very well against Memphis State. They are so far in this game against Seton Hall. If they can make those, they have a chance to stay in, if not win this game. Hurley found Griffin open. Griffin was starting to look up at the bucket and kicked it out of bounds. 15th turnover by Seton Hall. That's an uncharacteristically high number at this point in the game for the Pirates. And as we mentioned at the outset, for those of you who were with us, B.J. Carlismo was very concerned about his team playing Western Kentucky because they haven't played a team that likes to press and trap for the full 40 minutes all year long. Bell hit the deck as he missed. Trying to draw the foul. There was not much contact between me and Danny Hurley. Hurley pulls up and misses. And Bunton kept it alive for Chris Robinson. Ahead of the field, Darius Hall missed the layup. Bunton missed the tip. Leahy control. Leahy knocks it in. His first points. He had two points in 15 minutes on Thursday against Tennessee State. Away from the ball, a foul on Seton Hall. It's on Jerry Walker. And it's his third. Foul's on number four, Adrian Griffin, his fourth. Check that, the foul's on Griffin, and that's his fourth. Still to come on CBS Today, Cal and Duke from Chicago. And out west, Santa Clara and Temple to meet in Salt Lake City. Broncos, of Coach Dick Davies, pulled the upset of the first round. The 15th seed, Santa Clara, eliminated Arizona. We're playing a very good Temple team. Santa Clara's got their hands filled because John Chaney intentionally goes out and plays a very tough schedule during the year so that he can prepare his team for the postseason tournament. And I think Temple Owls have a very good chance to advance if they continue to play like they have played the earlier round.
Robinson's first free throw was a line drive into the front rim. 64% free throw shooting. He made the second. Seton Hall leads by one with 10-10 remaining. Western Kentucky did not shoot a free throw in the first half. There's seven for 10 from the line in the second half. Early, the baseline, and then kicked out to DeHaer. Leahy nearly turned it over. Munton saw the pass coming, but couldn't get there quickly enough. Scramble. Robinson takes it away. Again, the quickness by the Hilltoppers going after the loose balls. Hall lays it in. Leahy changed the shot, but it still dropped for Darius Hall. The sophomore from Detroit has four, and Western Kentucky has the lead back. Caver blocked the call. It's against Darius Hall. That's three on Hall. This is a very difficult angle to watch this shot. Take a look at Caver as he's coming right at you. Hall moves. He actually moves as Caver is in the air. You have to give Caver the opportunity to come down. Look at Mark Bell making the long pass up underneath and Darius Hall using great athletic ability to be able to hang in the air and get that ball to go in the basket. Western Kentucky continuing to run, continuing to press. Caver has not scored today. The foul was the seventh for the half against Western Kentucky. A one and one opportunity. He missed the front end. Western Kentucky with the ball on a one point lead with 920 remaining. They've led through most of the game. They had a lead of nine points at one point of the first half. Terrible pass. Bell threw it away to DeHair and then fouled DeHair on the way up. Bell didn't like the call. It was his second foul. And fouls the story at the moment, piling up on. Both sides. Robinson, me, and Brown of the Hilltoppers with 4 H, Karnishavis, and Griffin for Seton Hall with four apiece. The hair nine for 11 from the line. The steal was his fifth. Terry DeHair has had to work a lot harder this second half to get open for a shot. You just saw him pass up a three-point shot earlier, and that's because Western Kentucky's playing much better defense out on the perimeter. 25 points for DeHair. His season high is 41 in a game against St. John's. Back and forth we go. It's the Hall by one with nine minutes left. Gardell Mee is at the table getting ready to check back in with his four fouls. Bell went spinning through the lane and missed a shot. Munson dumped it off. Wright challenged the shot and committed a foul as Robinson took it to the rim. Excellent ball movements by the Hill Choppers that time. Getting the ball off the miss by Darnell Mee and continuing to stay with the basketball. Tipping it, tipping it, keeping it alive, making that extra pass to try to get the highest percentage shot. Saw me has come back in with four fouls. Two shots for Chris Robinson. He's one for two from the line. Two for three from the line, and we're tied at 51. It's a big decision by Ralph Willard to put Darnell Me back in the game with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go. Darnell's going to have to play very smart while he's on the floor and avoid a lot of the contact and reaching that he did earlier. The freshman Robinson calmly knocked it a pair to put the toppers back up by one with 8.45 remaining. It has turned into a foul festival. That one's the third on Bell as he hacked Danny Hurley. That's the ninth team foul against the Hilltoppers. So in every foul the rest of the way, and that's a lot of time, 8.41, we'll have two shots. The entire Western Kentucky bench stands whenever Western Kentucky goes back on defense, trying to get this team pumped up, excited, hopefully forcing another turnover. Hurley, a 72% free throw shooter. Fans in Western Kentucky chanting Bobby's better a reference, obviously, to Hurley's older brother, Bobby. We'll play for Duke against Cal later this afternoon here on CBS. In 
17 fouls called among the two teams in this half. And only a total of 17 among the two teams in the first half. The free throws could well decide it. Both teams shooting well from the line at the moment. Seton Hall by one. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Me. Bell. A three. He's been quiet. 13 points for Bell. Just an NBA three. Me the rebound. Robinson missed a three. Caber had a hand of the rebound, then hit the deck, then hit Bell. Me for three. Robinson just fouled out of the game as he went crashing into the back of Luther Wright. So Ralph Willard loses Chris Robinson with 7.54 remaining. That's not as crucial a loss as Darnell Me should he lose him to the fifth foul. Robinson, a good role player on the team, but he is replaceable. Chris Robinson has worked very hard this evening in this basketball game and does a great job for Ralph Willard's basketball team, but you, you make a strong point there, Sean, that he is a person that Ralph can come in with another player to be able to replace that interchangeable part, but it is going to be important for Western Kentucky to stay out of foul trouble. Putting a guy like Luther right to the foul line might not be a bad idea. He only shoots about 68% from the free throw line. Luther Wright has only played 11 minutes due to the pace of the game. He's now 0 for 3 from the line. One out of two for Wright. It's a one-point lead for Western Kentucky with 7.54 remaining in Orlando. Fouls the big story at the moment. Chris Robinson has just fouled out for Western Kentucky. Darnell, me, and Brian Brown each have four. Karnishevis and Griffin of Seton Hall with four fouls. And Terry DeHare has been Terry DeHare with 25 points and five steals. Western Kentucky with the ball, leading by one. With under eight minutes remaining. In the second round game in the Southeast region, the winner gets Florida State Thursday night in Charlotte. Horn, after a couple of fakes, was short with a shot. Walker cleared it. There's an opportunity Western Kentucky needed to either get a score or get to the free throw line. Caver and Hurley, both point guards on the floor right now for Seton Hall. Hurley, a big three. That's the first three-pointer of the game for Seton Hall. Hurley is five points. Me with four fouls. Tipped his own miss. Then it was tipped in by Cephas Bunton. Cephas, great job by the Hilltoppers to stay after the loose basketball. Really surprised to see Darnell Me staying in there on the trees, amongst the trees, but he's trying to keep his team in this basketball game. Hurley off to Walker. He missed a short one. PJ thought he was fouled by Bell. Walker hits the deck hard with Hall. Six remaining. The Pirates and Hilltoppers tied at 57. P.J. Carlissimo and the Pirates with their 12-game winning streak in jeopardy, and their season in jeopardy as well. They came in considered by many around the country. Have a great chance to go to the Final Four. They still very well may. But they're in a fight for their life with Western Kentucky at the moment. Stephen Hall's done a good job at making free throws to get in this basketball game, and also now looking for their outside shots. And the man of the moment is Danny Hurley, who's knocked in two three-pointers in a row. The Hall by three. 
But Western Kentucky has done a, a tremendous job on the defensive end, made some great steals, also forced turnovers early to get to their early lead, and now they've gotten back to a situation where they made a basketball game out of it because Seton Hall has gained their confidence. Bell tied to tie with a three and miss. He used his quickness to get it to the corner. This is the largest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Western Kentucky has led throughout most of this one. Florida State routed Tulane in the first game of the day here in Orlando. The Seminoles will meet the winner of this one in the Sweet 16 Thursday night in Charlotte. Six minutes remaining. The leading scorer for Western Kentucky, Darnell Mee with the ball, has four fouls. And his three-pointer is off the mark to hit the shot clock. Seton Hall will inbound. Just committed his fifth. He's number four. Where's the foul? So Griffin is fouled out. Chris Robinson of Western Kentucky fouled out earlier. Arteris Karnishevis comes back in, and he's playing with four. Darnell Mee's playing with four for the Hilltoppers. As you mentioned earlier, making free throws at this time of the game is going to be critical for both these teams. They both shot well today, each at 75% from the line. The difference is, Seton Hall's had many more chances. 18 of 24 are the Pirates. Western Kentucky is 9 of 12. 9 of 13. Karnishevis saved it. It's a three-point lead for Seton Hall. We're under five minutes remaining. Close in this game. Those because Johnny Essex has been 
virtually nip and tuck throughout the second half. That's the 17th turnover by Seton Hall. Knee intercepted the pass. Two to tie. Three for the lead for the Hilltoppers with under four minutes remaining. All alone with three in the lead. Bell drives it in. The hair double team lost at the horn. Man ahead of the field is Hall. The pass was a bit slow in getting to him from Bell, who had hit the deck. Western Kentucky, the seven seed, leads the two seed, Seton Hall by one point. They have the ball with 3-12 remaining, and Ralph Willard wants a timeout. It takes strength to go climbing seven days a week. one compact pickup powers you with the biggest full-size V6 engine you can get. Only Chevy S10 Tahoe 4x4. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Pizza Hut. Oh, great! Your other pizza. Oh, another one! <laughs> Salad? Yeah, and you also wow. get... Dessert. Dessert. <laughs> but, but that... Get two medium pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies. Dinner for four. Just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. Blue. Got to thinking about his career. Said I can do more than just blue blazers. I'm getting a new agent. So he signed with Dockers. And from storm blue to sapphire, indigo to cobalt, we took blue to heights he never dreamed. And now blue's a star. But he's never forgotten who gave him his big break. Dockers. Nobody does blue like Dockers. This is friction. Metal grinding on metal. Friction can wear your engine down. Friction can shorten its life. fighting motor oil that protects more engines than any other motor oil in America. Choose Pennzoil. Use Pennzoil and you'll get quality engine protection in each and every drop. Pennzoil. Performance. Protection. Quality. She's a marriage counselor. He's a divorce lawyer. What if this is a fixable marriage? I told him it was in the toilet. What if you're wrong? Oops. Good advice. Starts Friday, April 2nd. This has been a terrific game from the start. There have been nine ties and 17 lead changes. Western Kentucky had a nine-point lead in the first half. Seton Hall has enjoyed a lead of as much as five points here in the second. The largest lead for Western Kentucky in the second half, only two. And they have a one-point lead in the ball as we approach three minutes remaining. Darnell Mead. 15 to the shot clock. That's the third foul on Jerry Walker. Two timeouts remaining for Western Kentucky. Ralph Willard used the timeout to stop the play most recently. Two shot opportunities the rest of the way. The arrow points for Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky does not want their season to end here today. They've done a great job at playing great defense, still continuing to play the passing lane. Now, if they can make their free throws down the stretch, they have a chance to drive this home. Paul, only a 48% free throw shooter, made his most important free throw of the year, missed the second. It's a two-point lead. Under three minutes remaining. Walker on the floor with Caber, Carnishavis, Curley, and DeHair. Nearly a steal by Hall. Anticipated the pass to DeHair and nearly picked it off. 
great defense being played right now by the by Ralph Willard's basketball team in Western Kentucky, playing the passing lanes, denying that entry pass. Two and a half minutes remaining. 20 on the shot clock. Burley, that's a two. No good. Knee corrals it. Western Kentucky with the ball and a two-point lead with 2.20 remaining. Western Kentucky by four with a minute 39 remaining. We'll be back in just a moment. People that first come to Subway are a little surprised we don't have sandwiches ready, just fresh bread. That's so you can see your sandwich being made and tell me if you like onions, tomatoes, or even hot peppers. I'm not a mind reader, and there's lots to choose from. If your sandwich looks as good as it tastes, that's because Subway has a training center where experts like Mr. Pilchin teaches the art of making beautiful sandwiches. He calls himself an art teacher. I guess that makes me a sandwich artist. Ask a sandwich artist to make you a six-inch tuna sub. Just $1.89 for a limited time at Subway. Mm. Once you discover that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes have always been fat-free, you may find they taste even better. Mm. <laughs> fat-free Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. They're great! What we need now is the beach. And the brew! And the bay! Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer battery. It keeps going and going. Bill Walsh for Sharp. In sports, you'd better know where your X's and O's are. It's no different in business. You need a game plan. And Sharp's got winning game plans for your business. A booklet that'll help you find the right copier, like Sharp's high-volume duplicating system that's going to increase your productivity and reduce your operating expenses. And how Sharp, the number one fax company, can show you a plain paper laser fax with the lowest cost per copy in the industry. So call 1-800-B-SHARP for your winning game plan. Believe me, nothing beats winning. My husband, Elliot, he's an inventor. He's made a very good life for both of us. Last year, this big company paid a lot of money for one of his ideas. Elliot even thought about opening his own company. But in the end, we decided to invest the money. Besides, I'm not sure Elliot's cut out to work in an office anyway. Ask your financial advisor about Nuveen tax-free investments, or simply call this number. Each team has two timeouts remaining. Each will be shooting two free throws the rest of the way. What could be the most important part of the reset, the arrow points to Kentucky. Western Kentucky has the lead by four with a minute 39 remaining. For those of you just joining us, we mentioned at the outset, P.J. Carlismo was very afraid of the Hilltoppers because they play a trapping and pressing style for 40 minutes, which Seton Hall has not faced this year, and it has caused problems. DeHair missed a three. Karnishevis, a huge rebound, but a bigger block by Punchin. Horn juggled it. They were in a hurry with a four-point lead. Seton Hall down four. Punchin, a huge rejection of Karnishevis. Western Kentucky's defense has been exceptional on Terry DeHair. He's not been a factor the last seven or eight minutes in this game. DeHair thought about a three. Takes a three. It bounces off. Karnishevis tipped it. There's a foul. It's on Karnishevis. He has fouled out.
to confer because P.J. Carlissimo has time to make the substitution. Karnishevis has fouled out. His last three fouls all came at the offensive end of the floor. He's called for two charges and then called for the foul on the rebounding activity. How about that shot from here from three? Hit the rim, almost hit the top of the backboard, and almost dropped back in. Terry DeHaer has had a defender every time he's come down the court on the offensive end, right in his face, either keeping him from catching the ball when he does take a shot, if there's someone always had a hand right there. John Leahy, a good three-point shooter, has replaced Karnishevis. Me at the line. He has four shooting two games here in Orlando. He's one for two from the line today and two for nine from the field. It's a five-point lead with 59 seconds left. possession game. Caber to Hurley on the floor with Walker, DeHair, and Leahy. Obviously, they'd like to get DeHair free. Caber, the pull-up. No good. Walker had his hands on it. Bell set it off the back of the backboard. Seton Hall to inbound with 34 seconds left. Good defense. They made Seton Hall an awful lot of time. They made Seton Hall work very hard to try to get open for a shot. Terry DeHair again had nowhere to go, had to give the ball up. Western Kentucky by five with 30 seconds left. DeHair lost it to me. Me. Foul called on Walker. once again by Darnell Mee and the scrap and the hustle to stay with that basketball on the floor. Western Kentucky has been very quick to the ball in loose situations as well as on the boards. Now the Hilltoppers have to make their free throws to finish this game off. Darnell Mee made one out of two a moment ago. Hilltoppers by six with 25 seconds remaining. Still to come, Cal and Duke. The tip time, 7.06 Eastern, Santa Clara and Temple at 6.55. 11 straight points for Western Kentucky. Seton Hall has not had a field goal since 5.06 remained in this one. First turnover created by Western Kentucky. Seton Hall only averages 14 turnovers a game. He said Coach Carlissimo was afraid of the Hilltoppers pressing trapping style, and they've had problems with it all day. Seton Hall never got into a flow. No, they didn't, Sean. And P.J. Carlissimo also said that one day to prepare for a team like this really isn't enough, but you still have to go on. You have to get your guys ready. Watch as much film as you can. winning streak in the country is in very serious jeopardy. The ball came in having won 12 in a row. Bell missed. Still a seven-point lead for the Hilltoppers with 15 and a half remaining. Ralph Willard on the verge of the biggest win of his coaching career. They missed both. Only 13 of 21 for the line. The hair. The NBA three of the timeout. It's a four-point game with seven seconds left. We'll return to Orlando after this. Both Visa and American Express Gold Cards can get you to England for the golf vacation of your life. Charlie, how did your yank do? Well, we're up on the ninth seat. And he wants to be up in two, so he pops everything he's got into the shop, including his new graphite driver. But should you have a stroke of bad luck, only Visa Gold can get you back on course, because Cape Cornwall's only pro shop Charlie. doesn't take American Express. Keep a grip on it. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. No better way to face the day. It's a 
another non-stop day. So start out with Speed Stick, the wide stick. It's long-lasting protection against wetness and odor. It's 110% protection that helps you feel cool and confident all day. That's why more men face their day with Speed Stick. No better way to face the day. Stick, 110% protection. Mm. Once you discover that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes have always been fat-free, you may find they taste even better. Mm. <laughs> fat-free Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. They're great! Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. A special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. Lately, another 800 service has been promising to save you a few drops in the bucket over AT&T. What they're not telling you is that they lose 50% more 800 calls, calls take longer to get through, and the other company is twice as likely to have a network outage. Now, when you think of all the sales you could lose if you don't have AT&T, their promise doesn't hold much water. One of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. Division two, second to none. The NCAA Division II Basketball Championship, next Saturday on CBS Sports. Seven seconds remaining. Western Kentucky, the seventh seed in the Southeast on the verge of the upset of number two, Seton Hall. Got it in the horn. He's fouled immediately. And if it's on Walker, he is fouled out. Only nine-tenths of a second went off the clock. It is on Jerry Walker. So this could well be the end of his career, barring a miracle in the last 6.1. 17 points and nine rebounds for the senior from Jersey City, New Jersey. And on the Western bench, they're ready to explode. This is a proud program with a lot of winning traditions. As a matter of fact, this year's Western Kentucky team, the 29th Hilltopper team to win at least 20 games, and only six schools around the country have had more 20-win seasons. You're talking about Kentucky, North Carolina, St. John's, Louisville, UCLA, and Duke. That is the elitist of company, a very good company. But it's been a long time since they had a win like this one. Darren Hood horns the best free throw shooter on this Hilltopper basketball team at 75 percent. He has 14 points. Seton Hall has one timeout left. They can score and use one last timeout. The lead is six. Leahy looking for the long pass. It connects with the hair, and they get the last timeout. But they're down by four. There's only three seconds left, and they can't stop it again. Put it in the books for WKU. If you depend on your truck to last, here's news you should never forget. Of all the Chevy trucks built in the last 10 years, over 98% are still going strong. That's more than Ford, more than Toyota, more than Nissan. Over the years, no other truck is that dependable, foreign or domestic. Only Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. is Larry. This is his package. While Larry sleeps, the UPS total track system works round the clock. Tracking any air or 
designated ground package. It even records the recipient's signature. So now, any time, Larry can get the status of his package in seconds. Larry doesn't work around the clock, but his delivery company does. UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. Gray held a minor post to the British Secret Service when he was contacted by dockers. Come to America, we said. We'll build a whole wardrobe around you. Gray went for it. And now from gunmetal gray and flint to granite and slate, Gray's one of our best agents. It's all very hush-hush, of course, but the truth's bound to leak out. Nobody does gray like dockers. Tonight, the woman Raven loves is being stalked by an ex-con. They got her, job. Can Raven save her? We have a warrant for your arrest. When he's behind bars, Raven tonight. All right, we have to get you out to the start of your game. Santa Clara and Temple about to go out in uh, Salt Lake City. And 72-68, uh, the score. Western Kentucky leading Seton Hall. And they still have yet to inbound the ball. But Santa Clara Temple is coming up from Salt Lake. The winner will be getting uh, Vanderbilt in the next round. In fact, Seattle is the regional site in the next round. Let's go back to Orlando here for the closing second. Darnell Mee failed to do was get both feet inbounds before he caught or touched the basketball. We we're discussing the amount of time that went off the clock. It was 3.2, so Seton Hall lost a full second and a half on that one play. At this point, it doesn't matter. Seton Hall has no time on the The officials are talking it over. for Western Kentucky to go anywhere near the three-point line. They do not. The hair misses. And Western Kentucky has pulled off a big upset, ending the longest winning streak in the country of Seton Hall at 12 games. Seven seed over the number two seed in the southeast. The final score here in Orlando, Western Kentucky 72 and Seton Hall 68. The Hilltoppers advance to the Sweet 16. They'll go to Charlotte to play Florida State on Thursday night. The Chevrolet players of the game for Western Kentucky, Mark Bell, he had 20 points, four of seven from the three-point line. Terry DeHair in his final game at Seton Hall with 30 points and five steals. For Derek Dickey, Sean McDonough saying so long. Let's rejoin Jim Nance in New York. Thank you, Sean. So Western Kentucky into the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1978. By the way, the Hilltoppers went to the Final Four back in 1971. Coming up next, uh, California and Duke. That tip time, 7.06 Eastern time. Santa Clara and Temple about a minute away from starting out in Salt Lake City. And I have a reminder, those wanting to see the Santa Clara Temple game in the Bay Area can watch the Broncos and the Owls on KICU Channel 36 in San Jose. Our CBS San Francisco affiliate, KPIX 5, will be carrying the California Duke game. And we'll continue here on the road to the Final Four. Later on, we'll hear from Francesca and Raftery about the shocker, uh, Seton Hall out. But we'll continue after this.